y'all welcome back to another video my name is Jennifer if you're new here make sure you hit the subscribe button down below so you can stay up to date on all my latest videos um, today we're gonna kind of do a simple video of going through um, the different questions that I ask my wedding vendors um, so so far we have our venue booked um, we put our deposit down for our photographer and videographer and we um, through our venue we have to do catering through them so technically we have that booked as well but that's through our venue so um, I'm gonna just go through kind of like the general questions that I have asked um, like kind of the general ones for all of the vendors and then specific questions for each vendor type and I've split up the catering and the venue because some of our venues that we originally toured didn't actually um, have catering through them so there was questions that we would have asked the caterers if we had catering so let's get started also if you're new here um, our wedding is planned for October of 2023 um, and is going to be technically a destination wedding for us but for our families it's not because we're both from like the upstate New York region and so we're getting married in upstate New York um, because it's the fall time and all that so just for some background information for those of you who are new here so um let's see oops wrong one um and i'm going to be looking at my little pamphlet that i have i usually write out my questions before i go um i like to take notes i'm a note taker and so um really the biggest thing is also before you start anything i suggest to do some research on every single thing um make sure that whatever venues you're picking out fit your vibe so like for our venue i knew that um kind of we wanted more of like the rustic industrial lodge feel um just because that's kind of the vibe that i was going for for my wedding and nick gave me full um kind of full decision rights on that part um he just wanted once we did the tours he had like he gave me what his five um top things were so that's also another tip is make sure you know like what your top thing like needs are um and go from there so for me like i wanted to make sure there was trees like we wanted to make sure there was photo areas with trees because we want to get married in the fall and if you're getting married in the fall you want to be able to be outside and taking pictures outside um and stuff like that so figure out what like styles you also want for photographer and videographer so like some people do candid style some people do more portrait style so figure out what style you like there um the ones that we went with ended up being candid style photography we personally both like it better we take better pictures that way so for me i'm like yeah of course like whenever we take portraits it's like the awkward prom photos that's like yeah no that is just not not us so um now let's get into the questions that we t i tend to um always ask so the biggest question is do you actually have the date that you want available now if you're flexible on this like we knew we wanted to get married like early october or late september so we could give a range um that was very helpful but if you know you want to get married like say you know you want to get married like july 23rd specifically um then that's something that you need to make sure that they have available because if they don't then you know that that's not going to be the place for you um additionally what's the cost but also what's included in the cost so some places are really really expensive but sometimes with that expense it's like you can get um like a hotel block you may be getting extra linens like they may be an all-inclusive whereas like other places that i know we looked at were ridiculously expensive like 30 grand and that was just the bare minimum package and that didn't include um like anything like everything that we wanted to add was extra like a la carte or whatever um another thing is how many hours are included in the cost so like for weddings for venues it's like do we have the venue for the entire day is it just us or are we going to be splitting the venue with other brides and grooms um also ask about like what contingency and backup plans they have so for like photographers if one of them falls ill if they have a backup plan for that um or if there is like a storm and you're planning on getting married outside what's their backup plan for that so like i know for ours if it the weather does not permit us to get married outside for whatever reason then they have an indoor option as well that is just as beautiful um granted if it rains we've already decided that we're going to be outside because we don't care <laughs> and neither does our bridal party they're pretty laid back too 
Um, specifically with the venue, make sure you ask about liability insurance, but you can also ask the um, other vendors as well because sometimes they'll have their own liability insurance. And another one is ask about the refund and cancellation policy. This is usually written into your contracts, but it's just as good to keep a general idea on that. And also find out how they take payments. So if they do cash or credit cards, that's a big one as well. Um, and I'm sorry if I'm going through these fast. Um, I will see if I can figure out how to post a link if you guys are interested to my Google um, Doc maybe or something and or PDF. Maybe I'll make a blog. I don't know. I'll, I'll figure out what I want to do, but I'll post something so that way it's easier for you guys to access this um, if you guys want to like go back through what questions I have. Um, okay. All right, so now going back into the venues, um, so you can ask like how many, like this is typically on the websites is what I've noticed, but you could ask how many people can actually be in this location. So like if you know you're going to have 250 guests and the location can only accommodate 125 or less, then you know that that's not going to be the place for you. Um, additionally, you can ask about changing areas. Typically that's shown on your tour. Um, but for me, I know that I picked like my top three or four places that I wanted to go see um, and I showed them to Nick and he was fine with those four and so when we went home for last, it was last summer I believe, we um, visited the ones that were on my top of my list and um, just to get a general idea and then we ended up finding the venue that we both really liked um, and it had everything that we wanted. And so typically that's shown on the tour and to get a tour you just email whatever venue you're looking at and they also will send you like if you email any vendor they'll send you typically like a little packet and that packet will give more information regarding their packages and everything um, it'll give you the most up-to-date as well um, you can ask about the rehearsal dinner if they don't bring it up um, and one question is like typically it'll list if they have linens and chairs and all that stuff available but ask about specific colors so like I know we talked about wanting for my wedding black table linens and so make sure you ask like oh do you have like such and such color available or what color linens do you have available if you don't know what your color scheme is yet um, additionally you can ask about any decor that they have like on hand sometimes they'll have extra decor so I know one venue that we looked at they had the table lanterns and they're like oh yeah this is available table lanterns and uh, table numbers they're like oh yeah you can use this if you want to they had it set up for a prom when we went to visit um, and so they had everything out and they were like oh yeah these are ours you can use these table decorations um, also, you can see what overnight accommodations that they provide, so if they have a room block, or look to see what hotels are close by. Um, so, like our current venue or our venue uh, has a hotel attached to it, which is really nice. Um, so we get a room block through that. So, like that was a really nice thing about what we were paying, and part of the reason that we were okay with paying as much as we did for our venue. Um, and so for now, on to catering. Um, you can ask if they have an in-house caterer like what ours does or if they have a list of preferred caterers um, so I know ours or vendors in general as well um, and that's something you can ask the venue uh, is like do they have a list of preferred vendors um, and if there is an in-house caterer like do you have the option of using an out of like an out of house I know with ours we did not um, along with that you can ask the same thing about bartenders um, sometimes they may make you have to bring your own alcohol or your own bartenders or your own liquor. Um, and some places may restrict what type of liquor you're allowed to bring. So make sure you ask that before you um, sign anything or put any deposits down. Um, and if you are allowed to hire your own caterer, make sure that the kitchen will be available to them. Um, and then ask if there's a minimum price. Again, that's usually in the contract or in the pa uh, packet when you get it. Um, then we're moving on to photography and videographers. Um, there's only a few questions that I had for this one. So kind of going along what I said in the beginning about backup plans. You can ask if they carry any backup equipment with them in case like one of their cameras like dies or um, breaks. Do they Are they going to be bringing backup cameras? You can also ask them if they're going to be bringing assistance with them or if it's a bigger photography. Like I know with our photographer and videographer they're smaller like there's one of each. 
Um, but if they are going to be a bigger firm, and they may be sending an assistant. It may not be the actual person that you're wanting. So make sure that you have that those conversations up front with them. Um, also, figure out if they charge a travel fee. So I know for hours, they have the first hour of travel free or built into the price. And then every hour after that is a fee. I want to say it's like $20 or $40. I can't remember. Um, but it just covers their gas and, um, yeah, so just figure out what exactly that costs is. And that goes with like a lot of vendors. So like hairstyles are the same way I know and a few other things. And granted, I haven't done that. So we're only focusing on what vendors I've done, but I know I think DJs are the same way as well. If they might charge a travel fee. Um, and then another question is like, can we request specific shots? So, like if you know you want to do a specific first look with like your dad or your fiance or your future husband slash wife slash significant other, um, then you can do that. Or if like you want your dogs included, you could do that. Like just figure out what, um, they're comfortable with and make sure that it's the right vibe. Also make sure you have a few conversations with them. So like I sent emails back and forth with our people and... Even after the first email, I was like, yeah, these guys are definitely it. Um, they did our my future sister-in-law's um, senior pictures, and they captured her very, like, her personality perfectly in her senior pictures. I'm like, if you're able to do that in a picture, I want you doing my wedding. Like, that. that's just, it, it sold me just seeing those pictures. Like, it took me a little bit just to, like, really decide if that's what I wanted. And then they had a videography package on top of it, and I was like, yep, this is it. I'm sold because I know that I'm going to be watching the videos. I don't care what people say. I'm like, oh, you're never going to watch the video. Yeah, no, I know me. I'm going to watch the video. I've watched my engagement video like a million times because it just makes me happy. And that's what I do when I'm sad is watch my engagement video because I don't know. It just, it just makes me happy. It's one of the happiest days of my life. So, anywho. Another question to ask both the photographer and videographer is about social media usage. Um, so just make sure that like for me, like obviously I have a YouTube channel and all of that. So I just asked about being able to post the wedding video. Like I know I'm not monetized on YouTube, but I was like, I just want to make sure that it's clear. Like I want to be able to share this on my YouTube channel. I want to be able to share it with family and friends. Like I want to be able to post it with my people. And so I just wanted to make sure I was as open as possible with them about it and just make sure that it was okay. And they were perfectly fine with it. Um, and I feel like most people will be fine with it as long as you're just open and upfront about it and don't try to hide anything. Um, and alright, so that's all I have for you guys today. Like I said, it was going to be kind of a short and simple video. Um, and I'm sorry if I went through it quick. Again, I will try to figure out a way that I can post this so that way you guys can go through the questions. And again, if you just Google vendor questions, you can come up with a ton. Um... I feel like some of them are not necessary, but a lot of the time you can just email them and they'll give you a packet. You go through the packet and then once you go on the tour, that's when you can ask questions. When it comes to your like photographer and videographer, DJ, those guys, they'll probably be going through emails most likely. You may have a Zoom call with them or a phone call. Um, but again, they'll be sending you most likely like a packet or a brochure like that's pretty in-depth about their different packages and what comes with the cost. And so just make sure that you really look that over and make sure you understand everything and ask like the questions that are important to you. So like I said, make a list of what's the most important to you, find out what's important to your uh, fiance and just go from there because honestly it's both of y'all's wedding and you guys want to be the happiest. So just make sure you choose your people and that you're happy about everything. So yeah, besides that, I will see you guys back here next week. Um, I've been hinting at a surprise and that surprise I think think will be next week but we'll see so uh, make sure you guys subscribe down below if you guys haven't already and i will see you guys back here with another one i love you guys bye